Hi, John. Thank you so much uh, for the introduction. Okay, Zubair's arriving in just a moment. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, I, I can hear you. Yeah, do you, thank do you, you want to so share much. your screen now? Yes, please. Yes, I'll, uh, I'll thank you. Stay on until yeah. you've got your screen shared. Okay, let me grab that quickly. Okay. Is that visible? Uh, not yet, but it's. Um, here it comes. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, John, for the introduction. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, API Days, uh, for providing me this opportunity to speak. Uh, so, uh, as John mentioned, uh, I've been in Indonesia for uh, for almost a decade now, uh, working predominantly in IT sector uh, for uh, uh, data solutions uh, company. Uh, uh, then moved on into a startup uh, uh, domain, working for payments, uh, digital payments, uh, API platforms, uh, API payment solutions, uh, and uh, then custom building uh, data solutions. So let's. Uh, so what I'll be discussing is more uh, is uh, is focused on my experience uh, working for the telco payments, and uh, then I will share a use case where. Uh, in Indonesia, there's a bill aggregator uh, network. So, uh, billing aggregators are how how they uh, how they prioritize their uh, their network with with an APIs. And we discuss also about one of the uh, one of the pain points for the business where where they need to access to financial data. So that financial data, how they can access it through a centralized uh, platform. And finally, discussing a couple of data solutions, uh, which is uh, which can be orchestrated to an uh, API layer. So the first is um, Telco Digital Platform. Um, I was heading the Indonesia business for uh, uh, API Gate, which is a part of Axiata Digital Services. So what API Gate is, it basically it is an uh, aggregator of aggregators. So they have a um, direct and indirect connection of 110 mobile network operators. So that there are basically mobile network companies. So that includes about 10 network, uh, 10 um, companies of Axiata, which are which are based out of Malaysia, uh, Excel in um, Indonesia. Then there is uh, 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 there is a dialogue in uh, Sri Lanka, uh, Burma. Uh, sorry, uh, Sri Lanka, Cambodia, Bangladesh, uh, India, and uh, a partnership with uh, Sri Lankan company, uh, Singapore company. So they have about ten MNOs internally, and those are also connected with uh, other MNOs. So that that becomes as a uh, as their uh, network of all the mobile operators. So what they do, and then from that network operators, they have built an API platform using all the tel telco resources. So telco resources which are interconnected and which are uh, orchestrated to, uh, to an API platform. Then API platform that connects uh, with the digital merchant. Those digital merchants are predominantly into payments. Uh, the, they, they simplify payments. They are into gaming, uh, which require uh, telco resources uh, for their monetization. So once these uh, network, uh, once these things are uh, uh, into place, uh, how do you monetize? You monetize through different APIs. So they have uh, monetization APIs, communication APIs, um, identification uh, to the uh, to understand what the exact who the exact user is. Uh, then also uh, provide data services. We'll look into it um, uh, into the next slide, but. Apart from this, they also have an interesting, um, uh, interesting uh, uh, solution, which they say that uh, mobile network operators have an issue where they need to connect to lots of uh, point operations. So they need uh, different vendors uh, for they, they they actually need different vendors uh, for their uh, different business purposes. So example, they need an API for API layer. They need a different vendor. And then if they need to connect with um, uh, authentication, they need another vendor. Uh, so all this thing, what happened is uh, AP uh, Axiata internally uh, built, uh, uh, built, a sand, um, built an API gateway to connect all the internal Axiata's uh, networks. So that was successful. Once they implemented successful, they started offering to, uh, offering to other 
mobile network operator companies. So what happens is rather than you connect to point to point solutions, you directly get this one kind of uh, one solution that is uh, based on WSO2 platform. Axiat actually uh, purchased that. Uh, they they actually had a JV and then finally uh, purchased a platform it now, which is now called ADL, Axiat uh, Digital Labs. So that is platform and the plugin. And for the, the benefit for the mobile network operators is that they can start directly uh, using the API platform and uh, they, they don't have to be worried about uh, monetization so that it comes as a digitalization and monetization platform together. So that's another interesting um, uh, Axiata, what they build. And finally, uh, they also leverage this uh, to the uh, long tail platform where developers can actually uh, come to the platform uh, through, an, uh, through, an, through an open platform where they can use the uh, access, use different APIs like DCD, wallet, voucher, et cetera, in their application and uh, work on a revenue sharing model with the, with the developers, application developers. So that was a big success in uh, Sri Lanka, and uh, they were planning to uh, implement it uh, across Southeast Asia. So now let's uh, get, uh, understand uh, how, now let's understand how uh, different APIs work for uh, telco business. The first one is uh, DCB in um, Indonesia. It's called Potong Pulsa. So now, uh, if you uh, if you uh, if a customer uh, is uh, likes to play games and he wants to uh, he wants to see uh, and an example he wants to buy uh, some of uh, uh, he wants to buy a top up or he wants to buy uh, maybe a sword or maybe other accessories. So what he could directly do is rather than using uh, because in Indonesia there's a big pain of uh, uh, the card penetration low, you can actually use the mobile balance. So once he goes and pays, uh, you can um, you can select uh, the mobile operator. Uh, you will receive, in, the customer receives an OPI, uh, OTP, it's a one-time password, and then it, it can be confirmed as a payment. Another uh, issue for merchants is that um, they have the subscription business and they don't get repeat customers, uh, the repeat users. So what happens is that uh, so there's only one time engagement with the uh, with the customers. So in that case, the, the subscription management APIs, which will help you to uh, access the subscriber database, get the user consent, and uh, also help you with the recurring billing. And um, another use case is uh, about wallets. Uh, you can integrate with a, a wallet provider using QR code, and the customers can directly uh, pay the uh, pay the amount and it be get detected from their wallet account. So merchants can also uh, provide a voucher code uh, for uh, to to promote their products uh, and to increase the consumption. So what they have to do is that they provide the voucher code to an app, and the customers uh, they can they can see the app and directly use it. Uh, thing. Uh, for messaging, uh, there is an um, uh, interesting API called A2P, which is application to person, uh, where you can send uh, SMS notification for alert. So, for example, like um, you see, uh, once once you have uh, uh, book a rail uh, ride hailing uh, uh, trip, so you, you get a message that uh, this is the this is the driver. He has uh, he has accepted the order and he'll be reaching in a few minutes. So that is uh, for the bulk messaging, and also for the two-factor auth uh, authentication. So you need uh, in Indonesia, it's mandated that you need a SMS uh, OTP. Uh, so for every transaction, so you you need to. Uh, get an SMS uh, to confirm the uh, one-time password. And another issue with you can secure both the driver and uh, example one use case for the ride-hailing app again is that you want to secure the interaction between the drivers and passengers so that you could use a, a voice which will be masking through virtual numbers. Uh, you could also use a video uh, a video API so where that will be helping for uh, uh, direct consultation. So that will help for lots of uh, health-based startups. Uh, you can also get uh, location-based uh, services. And the geo-tracking uh, API also allows you to actually see on the map what is the exact location uh, of, uh, of your order, uh, where is it right now on, uh, on services. And finally, uh, in terms of uh, information provisioning, sorry. So in, uh, finally, in terms of um, so in terms of uh, information provisioning APIs, uh, the the app, I mean the API, uh, once you uh, it it gives you a pop up once there is a notification of uh, the balance. So if the balance is less, 
they say that uh, your balance is the, uh, is currently this much and for you to uh, enjoy the services you need to extend it so it does both the information and the provisioning then uh, let's under let's see this open bill network so io connect uh, was formerly called as io pop so uh, it uh, it is uh, it was earlier a uh, uh, b2c uh, payment uh, a fintech uh, it was payment fintech so right now it's uh, uh, it has re renamed itself as io connect so io connect it actually gets all the uh, billing operators into one platform so here you see uh, google pay you have uh, payments your vouchers e money everyone and then uh, and then the different uh, payment providers and then these are connected to the channel partners. So channel partners, uh, and then this is actually is provided as a platform for channel partners, so they can start monetizing it. So that can be online, O2O, banks, and then the retail merchants. So here, why is it necessary? Because uh, every there is no standardization. So everyone, uh, every different bill provider has its own uh, um, has its uh, has its own uh, uh, details. I mean, um, has its own system. And it's difficult to integrate with them, so you need to do an one-to-one uh, -one integration, and that does not make sense. So here, right. uh, Zubair, just, yes. just one moment. Uh, yes. We've lost your presentation for a while. Uh, are you able yes. to share your screen again? Yes, please. Uh, is it visible? No, I don't see it. Okay, now it's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so sorry okay. about. That. Okay. Uh, okay. Did you lose any audio before? No, no audio. Okay. Just, uh, no audio. Uh, just okay. the screen. representation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so what uh, are you gonna does on the platform is that it does not. Uh, so it connects all the bill providers, the telcos, uh, education, uh, the services. Uh, and also the government services, utilities, everyone to a uh, channel partners that is uh, through a tech integration. Uh, then it uh, also manages uh, your standardization and also, also reconciles everything, gives you all the reports, the usage report and everything. And also this further allows uh, uh, players like IOCANET and build providers to monetize on the different aspects of data. So one of the key thing is that as Google pays, uh, uh, as Google focuses, uh, on the on what people actually search for uh, Facebook on the likes you can actually uh, you can actually look at where uh, you connect or the bill providers focus on the uh, on target the people who actually pay for different services so that can be a very interesting monetization case uh, then onto the financial data platform uh, there is a company called uh, brick so brick understood that um, if you have to uh, any kind of um, uh, tech company a startup or tech company they need to uh, get data and they everyone most of the companies are moving into fintech uh, so they 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 have their own operations but uh, fintech is a part of their uh, business operations uh, as, as a part of the business model so if you do things on your own it takes time and then you need to keep updating so what uh, brick understood is that uh, it could get all the uh, all the different uh, uh, it could integrate uh, apis from banks wallet e-commerce and uh, telcos uh, orchestrated into one platform and, and provide a front fronting API. So that API, uh, so you have, and the way it works is that you just go to the application, select your, uh, the which data you need, you authorize yourself, uh, and then uh, you get the data of the uh, users. And uh, you also get the whole transaction, you get a, a analytics view. So these are some of the use cases which helps to get your identity and helps you to do a efficient modeling. Uh, another interesting use case is uh, for a company called XQ Informatics. Uh, so what XQ Informatics uh, did is uh, they they were working with uh, one of the biggest banks in Indonesia. So they had um, they had built a system everything on a Hadoop based data lake. But the problem is that um, uh, the usage usage of uh, Hadoop was not that very easy. So, then, so you have to use uh, something like uh, Hive and Impala. You need to integrate it with your systems. Uh, it, became, it became an issue. So what happened is that uh, they built an um, API gateway, uh, which, which could easily democratize uh, the usage of Hadoop and simplify the use of insights. So whatever they built as a data, 
data models, uh, their recommendations could be easily consumed through an API, which is easily accessed through a JSON format. Uh, as Hadoop is more of a naked system, so it, what it does is that uh, it safeguarded the system with whitelisting APIs and to only allow the people who have the, uh, e uh, the right amount of uh, access. So uh, we could only permit those who have uh, uh, access or credentials to use the uh, APIs. And then finally, what happened is this, uh, usually data and analytics company, uh, data and analytics departments are considered as a cost center. Rather than that, uh, what happened is through an API layer, you can actually understand what are the, how many calls are made. And through that, uh, if those API calls have been successfully transformed into monetizing, example, um, the customer uses some of the services, banking services, so that results into uh, 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 into revenue generation. And finally, we can move to a part of a profit center. So how it's been done is uh, you see uh, on, first is a data, uh, data which is put onto a data lake. And uh, then the data is spread onto a cloud, uh, cloud data as a uh, data platform. And uh, we use a rapid miner to do the modeling using Spark on Hadoop. And then you have uh, different use cases like enriching customers' data, acquiring new potential customers, personalization. There's also a crawling engine which, uh, which works on the background to get the open data, uh, open data from, uh, uh, from different sources. So that could uh, enrich that data into the system. And then the, uh, this uh, analytics layer is our, all these things stored into edge based tables. So these edge based ta tables are used as an API target. And uh, finally, uh, there is an, an uh, analytics gateway which can, uh, which can uh, pass an information uh, to, towards the internal operation and uh, other channels uh, and customer services, and et cetera. So this is one of the cases. So the, finally, uh, we understood that uh, this, these are. Uh, uh, these are the uh, common use cases, so we decided it's better to build a uh, build build an application out of it. So we built a web-based uh, API layer application uh, where where this uh, API uh, RESTful APIs are provided, and uh, where and then there are micro uh, plugins which can directly uh, get the data in and out of the thing. So it not only takes care of the security, we get a good reporting of the API usage uh, and the other integrations into the platform. Uh, final, uh, finally, we will see uh, a self-service uh, data platform, which was uh, built by AI Search. So what we understood with uh, dealing with lots of customers' uh, implementation is uh, the actual user of data, the business user of data, if uh, he, uh, he wants to get access, he is completely dependent on the, uh, on the IT team. Uh, so what happens is that we wanted to, we wanted to uh, democratize this thing. So, and then there's a concept of um, data lake. Uh, data lake is uh, more of a hybrid where there is uh, your traditional data warehouse and a data lake comes into picture, which calls a lake house. Uh, so lake house uh, where uh, this concept was further uh, further enriched with a delta lake. So you get all the uh, data from different sources, uh, your internal data warehouses, uh, your social media, your uh, social, me your social media, the flat flights um, and uh, all the different data sources. Uh, it could be your um, on-premise Hadoop implementation or a cloud-based solution, uh, irrespective of it. Then what you need is that uh, you need data science, machine learning, analytics, and streaming. So all these things are processed into one platform, and then you you get your results. So how it's being done is um, you ingest uh, your data. You you have a different points. You can drag and drop from different sources, uh, both the structured and unstructured data. And then uh, it comes into an engine uh, called uh, where you can uh, do a do a data uh, self service data quality uh, flexibility. With they have different models uh, based on that. You can actually enrich your data. You could profile your data, and then use all that data for a uh, automated machine learning. So there are some of the uh, pre built machine learning models uh, which are which you could use, and then um, then finally you get your insights. So another uh, one of the one of the use cases where we have is that we need to understand the uh, cost management of uh, APIs. So what happens is traditionally once you uh, spin up the server, there are lots of these uh, Spark, Airflow, Nifty, everything gets uh, gets uh, gets installed onto the server. So this takes lots of uh, um, lots of computing uh, process uh, coming across it. So what happens is first API is authentication API. So once the user logs in. 
uh, there's a JSON web token which authorizes, which checks with the uh, which, which checks with the pool of the users what we already have. So if this pool is already registered, it will uh, then access it provide you access to login. So that login API uh, kicks in. So after that login API kicks in, uh, then what the first is that you need to uh, start up your services. So if the, the API first checks whether uh, these services are already up uh, up and running. If it not, it uh, it automatically triggers that uh, uh, applications to be installed. Uh, then uh, it sees that if there is any request for ingestion, if there is a request for ingestion, uh, it starts and goes. Uh, start uh, it prepares the system to be uh, ready for ingestion. Then automatically, what happens is in the background there's a system called uh, uh, intelligent uh, uh, monitoring. So it says that if there is no activity for uh, say about 30 minutes, or if there is uh, if there um, if the disk usage is uh, less than 30 percent, so it automatically shuts off. The shut off is that uh, it uh, it goes into a mode where the where the computation uh, uh, all these engines and, and other uh, uh, other resources are, are shut down. So this is uh, these are the some of the use cases uh, starting from uh, telco payments, um, uh, bill network. Uh, getting the financial data and uh, finally uh, your own data management. So, and there is um, another uh, use case which I will finally uh, finish. So, apart from this, uh, you need uh, you 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 need someone to handheld you. So it's called uh, data adjutant. So it it's like an assistant for you on uh, on your application. So it checks whether uh, it checks all your automatically checks your data qualities. Uh, it sees uh, if there is any redundancy or something can be done, then the API kicks in and says that uh, there uh, there is no update. You need to update your data, uh, and this is uh, and this this needs this needs to be refreshed. And uh, you also get um, the transformations. What you need to do, so rather than saying that um, a business user can actually say that I need this number, uh, I need data from this table, and it should be joined to this. Rather than having a technical language, you can actually use a simple. English and then get that transformation, and uh, along with that, it's basically uh, having engineers in your team, but uh, that is uh, completely automated. Uh, thank you. So, uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, and let me see if there's any questions. For you.